Hello and welcome to our next session with the Kenosha Rising Project, our series on community voices. My name is Amy Grile. I am the chair of the City of Kenosha Commission on the Arts. I'm very pleased to have a, another interview lined up for our audience today. And I'm going to basically allow our, our interviewee to introduce herself, but thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Amy. It's great to be here. My name is Jenny Tunkies. I'm Chief of Staff for Kenosha County Executive Jim Cruiser. Excellent. So we're really kind of hearing from a different perspective, maybe in the public sector, but also mm -hmm. you are you are an artist yourself, I believe. I was a newspaper reporter and editor for 21 years, and um, now I'm Chief of Staff for the County Executive. But also in my spare time, I'm a singer in a rock and roll band. And I've been involved in various forms of, of arts and art organizations for a number of years. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to kind of hearing your perspectives and insights related to the creative economy. So let's get started. Jenny, would you consider yourself a creative? Yes. As I had mentioned earlier, I was a writer for many years and I'm in a, a rock band. So it uh, gets my little creative side out. Mm -hmm. And also I'm invo involved with the Arts Fund, which does the sculpture walk along the promenade in downtown Kenosha and various other organizations that have an emphasis in the arts. Sure. And in your opinion, is creativity sort of cutting into, I guess, your professional and personal lives kind of in interesting ways? I mean, that you rely on creativity maybe to draw I don't know, inspiration into your work? Absolutely. I think critical thinking and creative thinking is instrumental in certainly in my line of work where I try to find creative solutions to interesting problems. Absolutely. They never stop. <laughs> well, all right, Jenny. So today and throughout this series, we've been talking about the creative economy and many people aren't necessarily sure what that means. But to us, the organizers and many people working in the arts and innovation look at the creative economy as sort of the now there's a change. It's, it's subtle, but it's also quite profound where creativity is really the driver, the engine behind our economy. Whereas perhaps in the past, we were looking at other forces. Maybe it was just, you know, capital, maybe it was labor. And now we're seeing that really there's, there might be something that's different that, you know, maybe it's the information age, but we think it's actually specific to creativity. Would you agree that that's something, I guess, different that we're seeing? Yes, I think that historically going back into uh, pre-industrial revolution. I think a lot of innovation and creativity is what led to that. And then perhaps that sort of uh, waned a bit. And then now coming out of the Great Recession, I think creativity uh, and that innovation is something that people are um, seeing uh, come forth. And also locally, I think creativity is sort of the phoenix that is rising from the ashes of the post-auto industry era that we experienced here in Kenosha. Right. So even when, you know, people talk about the information age and the technology age, we we like to think that creativity really encompasses all of those things and that it's really creativity that allows people to find solutions to think independently to, you know, innovate in their respective, you know, industries or fields or even in their personal lives. So very good. So as far as components of creative economies, what would you say make an economy or an environment creative? Well, I think certainly providing the space that things like arts, um, music, innovation, design, can an environment where it can thrive, be it a space or just a general acceptance and a feeling of embracing that sort of creativity, I think is key. Absolutely. So a sort of environment that, I guess, um, fosters mm -hmm. uh, a sense of openness, of right. a sense of, I guess, freedom to express yourself. And certainly arts are such an important aspect within creativity, but don't necessarily embody the whole of it because people find creative inspirations in many areas that aren't necessarily arts that, you know, like you mentioned design or we talk about, um, 
you know, a lot of people computer programming, not necessarily something that you necessarily would attribute to arts, but certainly a creative field. Absolutely. So you think, yeah, there's many elements to those, those mm -hmm. environments that really do foster and um, embrace and enhance creativity. So now that we are talking about our, our Kenosha community, why or how has have you kind of evolved as a professional? Um, how have you adapted to an increasingly creative economy here? Well, I'm, as I had mentioned before, I'm sort of a refugee from the newspaper industry, which had uh, been on the decline. It's probably still a bit on life support, but certainly that creativity, the writing aspect of it is something that, that I still partake in and as part of this job and also mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. as I had mentioned before the ability to creatively approach issues and challenges and use that uh, investigative um, mm -hmm. creative eye mm -hmm. to look for solutions. Absolutely. So finding ways to kind of, I guess, reframe your abilities and your experiences so that right. they can be, I guess, adaptable in other fields, other lines of work. So, I mean, you're saying that the writing carries over in so many fields and, mm -hmm. you know, ability to have, I guess, that keen sense of, um, you know, where where we're headed and what we're up to next and you use all those skills in kind of various ways in your current profession absolutely interesting so what now that you are you know so vested in this community as a professional and a personal your personal life um can you speak to strategies that you believe we could um, move forward as a community to really make our our place even more, even if it is already really a creative place, I'm not sure that people perceive it as such, particularly from the outside. So we're talking about maybe um, strategies that our community could embrace and, you know, really start moving forward in a collective way. Mm -hmm. Would you have any ideas? Well, I think there are a lot of individuals and organizations that are doing great things. However, a lot of those are still going on in silos. Mm -hmm. And I think what we need to do is break down those walls, um, bring people together to really speak a common language so that everyone's on the same page to move the community forward, to move this idea forward, and to borrow a recently popular phrase, we're stronger together. Oh, so, oh. <laughs> so I think that that's one way we can mm -hmm. help to move this forward. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. So I would be very interested, particularly because you are a steering committee member with our Kenosha Creative Economy Strategic Plan, to see how you might, um, I don't know, work in that capacity as a steering committee member to make sure that more of these silos, I guess, are sort of uh, broken apart and that there is more of, I guess, a common direction we're all rowing in mm -hmm. to um, advance the community. Would you agree? Yes. Well, Amy, we need to have a roadmap. We need to follow that. You know, many great plans have been put together that end up shelved. I think we have to get people to participate, be on board with whatever roadmap it is we come up with, that strategy. Uh, and I guess as a member of not only the steering committee, but also in uh, the government sector, I see myself as advocating for that final roadmap map that gets put together. Fantastic. So speaking to so many elements here that we create the map based on what we're already doing and really finding ways of aligning those efforts and identifying where we already have a lot of momentum and a lot of, you know, sort of productive energies. But then, yes, as we get that map um, delivered, adopted, how are we, you know, going to keep moving the needle, so to speak, and, you know, keeping... Um, momentum around, you know, implementation is always, I guess, that struggle. So with the City of Kenosha, City of Kenosha Commission on the Arts, we would be taking sort of the lead on, you know, overseeing the implementation of that plan, but certainly we're not 
we're not in a position to be implementing things across the board, so we'll need those partners, I mean, whether it's government or business or academia, to really help carry some of that, that weight. Would you agree that that's kind of a strategy that would, I mean, we Absolutely. have to adopt here to make this plan even viable? Right. That's the only way it can work is if everyone agrees on a plan and works the plan. Excellent. So do you have any personal expectations for what, I mean, or have you spoken to them as far as what you want to get from this plan or how, how you see this plan affecting the community? A cohesive strategy that everyone can get behind and work toward and keep revisiting it and reworking the plan and mm -hmm. moving together. I think that's the only way that it can be successful. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jenny, for You're joining welcome. us. And we look forward to additional future conversations with other visionary leaders. So thank you so much. Thanks, Amy.